I could say Jay Z's one for sure. Lil Wayne has moved up for me. Into the top five. Yes. Good he's for you. Up, he's moved up for me. I feel the same way, and I have felt afraid to really own it because there's so there is Wayne hate. People from try. people who aren't really listening to Wayne. Exactly. I I you asked me last year, I wouldn't say. But if you're still doing this at this level, I can't, I can't talk to you. Like, don't talk to me if you don't understand what Lil Wayne's doing. It becomes a LeBron sort of thing. Like, he's been yes. doing it at a very high level for a very long time. That's exactly it. But, but then there's staples like Biggie's always going to be there. And MF Doom is a favorite of mine that I can't. For sure. I can sure. never, like. So that, and Ke- that's recently. So Kendrick is not in your top five? He's six right now. And Nas? Nas is pro- is in the 10, yeah. The tour ratio. Okay, though. The tour ratio. Okay, though. That might be the best question I've ever been asked. <laughs> You're a phenomenal person. I mean, you legendary. I am a fan of you, my brother. King Green is an amazing indie rapper and TikTok star. And I wanted to get into it with him about the science of rap and he is brilliant on the subject so let's get into it it's my man king green on torre show king green yes welcome hey how you doing so take me back to the first hip-hop song that really grabbed you and made you say, wait a minute now, because <laughs> clearly you love it. Yeah, love it. So what? What? Where, where, what is the portal that sucked you in like, yo, that, that is me. That's my identity. I'm going to say two songs. It's going to be M-E-T-H-O-D, man, and Shook Ones. Mm. Mob Deep. Mob Deep, Prodigy, and Method Man were my first favorite rappers. And it, I'm lucky to know Method Man now. Shout out to him. His birthday's about to come. And it's like, that was it for me. I was like, what was Method it Man. about Method Man, the song? Every, the song was just cat, more catchy than the other songs on uh, the album. So I think that's why I, I gravitated to it. But, and then it's like, uh, and the flows. Plus the lyrics, I, I could like understand the lyrics more as a like, what, a nine? I don't know how old, nine year old? Mm, the, the, there, is the, there is a clarity in that record that would allow exactly. even a new hip hop fan to understand it. Exactly. Right. Rather than somebody who's a little more sonically dense and like, I can't really understand what they're saying. Can don't know what they're saying or, or just in, like, uh, uh, inspect deck and Jizza, what they were doing on that album. Like, yeah. they, they read the dictionary. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And brilliant. it's like, and yeah. I'm like, I think this is brilliant, but I don't understand what I'm listening to. Yeah. Once I get to M E T H O, I'm like, Oh, M E T H O. He's just spelled out Method Man. His name is Method Man. I'm nine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm Love like, that. I didn't yeah. know that you could do that. I got five bags of stove. I got that whole Grabby melody. It's melody. grabbing me with the melody and the flows, and I can understand the lyrics. So I'm like, wow, that made me want to write. But what about, sh- go ahead. But the funny thing about that is like, I didn't want to write like Method Man. I was like, I can't write like Method Man because then he's not going to like me because he's going to think that I'm. Fighting his style. For sure. This is me at nine. <laughs> Thinking that I'm about to. Oh, you're already like in rapper mode. I'm in rapper mode. I'm If there's nine rappers on a record, I could be a rapper. There's nine of y'all. So I'm like, I could be a rapper. So I'm like, uh, I can't be like him. So I'm going to be kind of like a mixture of like Jizza and Rizza. And, and it's like, I got to have big words. I got to read the dictionary. Yeah. So then I come up with my first rap ever rap line, which is. I developed a mastery of causing verbal catastrophe. That was my first. <laughs> I developed a mastery, mastery of causing verbal catastrophe. Okay, all right, all right. Crazy. That bar okay. is still crazy. Okay, <laughs> I fuck with I it. Might, I might still use it. What yeah. about Shook Ones? What and that grabbed you? I could understand everything Prodigy was saying. He was speaking very clearly and direct, and he was what, 17, 18? And like how the same way that Pusha T and Malice have a different way of talking about street life and that perspective, and it just seems so proper and educated. That's how I got Prodigy. I was like, oh, uh, I, I'm not trying to be a shook one. Like I ain't, I ain't gonna fake this shit. He's like, don't fake this shit right. because you don't want to be around here. We're not doing this for fun. But it's such a great right opening line. I got you stuck off the realness. 
And he did right there with that state. <laughs> right, right. That shit right. is a paradox when you think right. about it. I got you stuck off the realness. It's like, yeah. <laughs> now the whole thing, you're thinking it like. And then we beat it infamous. So he's immediately coming in with an internal rhyme, right? Because the line has not finished. At all. Right? Yeah. Like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's it's it, part of G's. Official Queensbridge murder. Murders. Like. When he said that, like, the mob come equipped with, like, oh, I better listen. Exactly. You're like, <laughs> Yo, this is a real person talking about some real shit. And right. then letting you know, I'm real. You don't want to come here Because Method fake. Man, at least in that record, and through his career, he's very much an entertainer. Very much. Right? Prodigy and them is like, I just took a break from the corner to, to spit this rhyme. I'm going back in the corner. I don't care about this. I took a break to let you know what we was doing over there. <laughs> right, right, and right. And you shouldn't come over here. <laughs> right, right. I'm going to go back. Right, right, <laughs> that, right. It, it, which is classic hip-hop of like, this is my side gig. Yeah. Like living life, being be in the street or living life. That's my real shit. Yeah. Right, I just toss off these rhymes because I'm so brilliant. That that's it, and that's the thing about like what Biggie said about like if I if I worked at McDonald's, I'd be rapping about flipping burgers. <laughs> like that's, it's a joke, but it's true. It's like, and I always took that as a reality. Like, yo, it's you rap about what you what you are and who you are. Like, whereas people think like what happens is a regurgitation of content and stuff like that. People rap about what other people are rapping about, and that never made sense to me. Obviously, because I was like, I can't be like Method Man at nine years old. Talk about how you write. How I write. So many different ways. So I write I write in a way that a lot of people write where you mumble things and then you put the words in. Like I mumble a whole verse and then, okay, what's the concept of this? What, I'm, what am I trying to say? What am I feeling? Or real words will come out and let it flow. It's mad organic. Or I might have a concept, know the beat, and I could rap. I could write to the beat once I hear it. I don't need to hear it anymore. I'll just write the, the cadence and flow and then then do it so it's like a multitude of ways of pen to writing. paper or straight to the phone or you just know all pen. of it I'm, i started doing pen to paper again this year with a lot of songs that i'm writing every other i'm dropping a song like every two weeks and the last two songs i wrote pen to paper just because i wanted to know how that felt like again just to like right but and i'm before that you were doing it without pen yeah i'm just just recording into like kyle wayne yeah. does it where you just punch it and stuff just recording it and because it's so easy you got a mic on, on a stand like this you're at a computer, I'm typing, I produce things myself, I record myself, everything like that. I could just say the word. Wait, you so you do pun you do a lot of punches. Yeah, I, I do both. I like to do a full take or do a punch. This seems to be you did a whole TikTok on punching and this seems to be a big thing in hip hop that yeah, yeah, a yeah, yeah. lot of MCs will not admit to punching. Right? That's which that's they weird act, when when that's what people do. No, I know, I know. They <laughs> act like, you know, I just so we understand, a lot of MCs will just rap a whole verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Some people will rap some, stop, right? Punch in, right? Yeah. Recording-wise, and like, now I do the next bit. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's a weird thing that people will, if you ask a real, yeah. like, big MC, they'll be like, no, uh-uh, we just did old, the whole old thing Old-school MCs will come off like, no, I'm about to write this. And it's a lot of, lot of old-school MCs literally writing notepads, still the yellow ones. They need the yellow legal notepad, and they're like, no, get give me a, a notepad, and they write in the joint. I think that's amazing. I think that it is like a brilliant thing to see some old nigga writing in a yellow. <laughs> but but uh, to talk about the punching situation, I think that's weird, because people think writing, the, the, the idea of writing has been made like, oh, I am taking a pen and putting it in a paper, so I put so much calculated thought into it, or I'm typing. And that's writing. Writing is the creation of, yes. of it. So yes. when you're punching and you come up with something, you are writing. Like that's but you're what you're saying is. that it's easier to stay on the beat via punching. There's a feeling that comes with punching that seems like you find different pockets with punching. If you could feel it when you're rapping. Like when I'm doing it and I hear a beat and I'm like, I'm like finding a pocket. And it, whereas when you're writing, if you wrote, if I wrote to the beat in my head, because I could hear the beat, I'm sticking to this uh, pocket that's in my head. And what I think, a paradigm of the beat that, because I might not even be listening to the beat, or I'm sitting here listening to the beat and I'm writing it, and you're not really catching the same pocket. It's just different, not better or worse. So you thinking about flow, yeah. the, the word, 
Do the words suggest a flow or could you put any flow to any group of words? My perspective, this is me, I could put any flow to any group of words in my brain. But flows do push certain words into it to a degree, I would say. Some, just like when you write a song, okay, Max Martin, songwriters at that level and songwriters from the beginning of time. They'll do these sonic mumblings and stuff to sing out a melody, right? And then they'll try to fit a word into it. That's the same thing. It's just that they are so hooked on the phonics and sonics where it's like, it's, this is an A sound. It needs to be a word with an A sound. Because like, ah, uh, you want to, it has to be that. You can't do an O sound. It can't be an E or uh. So that's where sometimes that plays because it's how you feel when that vowel sound comes out. But with rapping... The feeling is in a lot of times the flow, the cadence, and the messaging. Yeah. The messaging is usually always number one, but people act like it's not. To me, the flow is number one, right? When I'm relating mm -hmm. to an MC, I want to hear the flow. Often first, second, maybe third time through the song, I really can't understand a lot of what you're saying. But if yeah. the flow is working, I'm, I want to keep listening, keep listening. And the, the magic to me is how MCs... Make a beat with their mouth, right? Become a polyrhythm oh, yeah, yeah, within yeah. the track, right? And like you could tell, if you get if you just listen to the acapella, you would still hear a beat from their mouth. And yeah, like, how do you do that? How is a is an interesting <laughs> a question that's almost existential to me. To say like, how do we do anything? But not nah, um, whether you're on the beat or syncopation or 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 all that. It's like when you're thinking about a flow, it's you really become an instrument. You yeah. are an instrument. Yeah. So you're you a drum. Yeah. You're like I am a drum with tone, though. You know, with and and melody sometimes because that's why some people be not won't call melodic rap rapping. It's like it's still rapping because of the syncopation, the the uh, rhythm of it is so important to it, right? But they they have a melody attached to it, like Bone Thugs Before or whatever. So it's really about understanding music and being a a musician. That's why rappers are inherently musicians. For sure. Even though, I forgot that, there was that viral video of Sukiyana saying, I'm not a musician. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> I'm not a musician. That was a joke. Bob, not, that was that's a Bobby, That's a Bobby shit. Yeah. Um, but no, this, this that is the most important thing to me. How you flow. How, yeah. hey, you could talk about killing people or the Black Panther socialism. If there's a flow, I'm rocking with you. But don't you think the words grab, like, Tupac, I'm, I don't know why I only have to, like, I mean, no, keep your head up. I want to go with a positive song, because the first thing I was thinking about is hit him up. Like, those first lines, when someone says something poignant, because Tupac does something like, I like to say, talking about what he's talking about. It's straightforward. Well, you you, you, you mean like the Rakim? Like, I am talking about thinking, like that sort of thing? No, what I, I'm saying, like, he's... Uh, um, uh, the blacker, the better, the sweeter, the juice. Like, it's going straight into telling you what now people like this song because of the content. I would argue that Tupac doesn't have a lot of great beats. And no. and the, the multitude of flows that he has isn't something like a Kendrick. or No. But one of the most impactful, or if not the most impactful. And that's because of lyrics and voice. Well, and flow. But the lyrics are really grabbing you because he's like, yo, I'm real. I understand him. I relate to him. And I'm saying, yes, flow is the first thing that's going to catch you because it's feeling and music. And, but the words matter so much. And people try to, even though if you don't understand it right away, it's hitting you. That's my thing when I'm saying that. For sure. Same thing with the vowel sounds. Like an A is going to make you feel differently than an O sound in this song. I'm saying that the fact that he said, um, uh, or like we said, I got you stuck off the realness. I got you stuck off the realness. If you said, "You be the infamous," uh, yeah, I got I got a rough type of feel feeling. Like, is that gonna get you the same? I got a rough type of feeling. That's stupid. I, I mean, it, 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's stupid. I mean, that thing you're talking about with lyrics that exists in all music, exactly. right? And and yeah. we love rappers for the pen and the things that you say, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and but I mean, at least in me. An MC can say nothing 
And if he's got a group, she's got a great voice and great flow, mm -hmm. rhythm, one, two, three into the four. And we're all done, right? We, we're all, he hadn't said nothing. Facts. But yeah. the, the rhythm and the sound of the voice, we're like, I'm all in. All in. All in. I, I, I agree with you. I think that's the, I think that's the initial feeling of response by do. I'm just saying that I think it's a combination. For sure. Because if it was mumbling, it gives a different feel. And that's why old people don't like people like younger artists and saying that they mumble rap. It's, I, or I, or they would we would all be okay with people mumbling if that were true. That word, if words didn't matter, everyone would be okay with the mumbling. And I like the mumbling. No, I'm not mad at mumble. I, lo I love I love Yachty. I'm I'm not mad at mumble. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. All of us want to be happy, but sometimes there's something inside you that's keeping you from happiness, that's bothering you. But you deserve happiness, and you can work through it with a licensed therapist who is trained to help you. I'm in therapy now, and it is powerful. If you're thinking of starting therapy, you should. And you should give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, it's convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and help get matched with a licensed therapist who's ready to take care of you. And you can switch therapists anytime. Find happiness. BetterHelp can help. Visit betterhelp.com slash Torre to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Torre, T-O-U-R-E. Betterhelp.com slash Torre. Uh, you know, Drake is a challenge for me because In what way? It, it's not what, is what people hate. It, Drake? <laughs> See, I don't want to say hating. OK, yeah. but as I've said, <laughs> my number one relationship with the MC is on their flow. Oh, you, you're not you know, a fan of his flows. I, I would half argue that the man does not really flow like like a penguin does not really fly. Right. It's a bird that cannot fly. It's, Wait a it, it's giving. Uh, uh, slam poetry, right? Which is great. I love slam poetry. You call Drake slam poetry? Oh, for sure. As far as flow. <laughs> as far as flow goes, I'm trying to get you. Because Drake hops on other people's beats and completely does their flow. So do you not uh, like their flow? You know, quite, no, uh, quite often. I look, because I, I actually thought about that. Quite often, he will change the beat. Right, like on sicko mode, like there's a bunch of songs where he's on with other people, yeah, yeah, yeah. and when he comes on, he changes the beat so that you don't sicko see. Mode's hard, I don't know how. I'll, it's hard as hell, but yeah. he, he, that it's an intro. It's basically a a talking intro. He's not really, really rapping. No, but at the end, like a light, like a light. That whole thing is him, and and yeah, like yeah. and uh, it's um, like a hook. It's not really a verse. <laughs> okay, I mean, I'm not, I'm not remembering the verse off the top of my head on um, uh, Sickle Mode, even though I love that song. But J I wouldn't completely disagree with you. On okay. It. Like, Drake has a multitude of flows like that people have copied, which is very interesting that, that you say that. And he, and he copies other people's flows, and he does it very well. I think his, uh, his ability to change characters and, and his ability to change um, flows is probably his strongest capability which is very interesting flow it's his strongest capability my god i i would yeah i think i'm trying to think about it right now because if you're on versace versace he's doing versace flow he's on a, a a song with uh uk guys he's putting on a uk accent and he's doing their whole flow no i mean i i know he's got accents i try to be counting and i'm like Ah, dog. You're you, like you're, you're you missed, like you on a different beat. You missed. You missed. <laughs> you missed. It's it's very tough. It's interesting because to me, if you like Drake, it's partly because of what he says, right? Which I mm. find most of his content super corny. He's complaining about women and yeah, 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 like, yeah. But at least he gives you an ability to understand who is he. He's a young guy. He's got a lot of money. He's got a lot of women. Mm -hmm. He's in his feelings. These sort of things. As opposed to someone like Nikki, who she could flow. Yeah, 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 yeah. She got voices. She got cadences. That monster vo verse is, any, is the only thing I ever need to, to respect well, Nicki Minaj. Well, we can talk about that. But he, but she, <laughs> she'll switch up flow within a verse two, three times brilliantly. Yeah. But I'm like, who are you? 
What are you all about? Yeah, yeah. Where are you I from? Agree with that. I Who agree are with you? That. You're always a character on the mic. Mm-hmm. I am Roman. I am better than you. You bitches ain't shit. Like, okay, but who are you? And like, I know who Drake is, but he can't flow. I Nikki flow her ass off, but I don't know who she is. So I would argue you don't have to know who who a person is, but you have to know what they're trying to say. So, I, and that's true. I think that she's not in either of those spaces. But with Drake, like you said, the reason why his lyrics work is imagery. Drake, I think that's he has a uh, is which is funny because he's a and, visual writer. Imagery, the descriptions, and it's like, my nigga Jibber, he riding the passenger. I don't know who Jibber is, but I know that, he, I oh, that's his, and he's in the passenger side. It's like, you're, 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 he's very descriptive of very details. All the details of his life, he says it in very simple and small ways, and you're like, oh, I'm a, with context clues, I understand where, um, where he's going with this direction or where this narrative is going. It's never really just uh, ambiguous as far as the descriptive things like you saying five a song being 5 a.m in dallas is right there that's imagery sure you know what i'm saying so it's everything is with imagery which is funny because Pusha t is the same way and that's the best part about it. his imagery is i mean just next level but i mean Pusha is great open the frigid air 25 to life in there i heard that and i t- i turned off the song <laughs> I turned off the song. I said, I got to think about this real quick. Open the frigid no, dare 20 lives for life. Trust I know them 20s real well. well. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, what are we talking about? The imagery level on Pusha T is crazy. That's why when people like talk about Pusha T and some. But Monster for a second. Oh, you want to go I back did to this, that? I did this. I did this. I, I, I would be walking around Brooklyn. And there would be dudes like, yo, and I'd be like, okay, brother, let me stop. I know you don't know me, <laughs> but let me stop you for a Just second. Just regular Brooklyn dude. <laughs> right? Because Monster, she surprised us. We didn't know who she was. That's yeah, basically yeah. a debut single as far as the culture, right? I know yeah, she's yeah, yeah, yeah. been doing mixtapes, but like most people did not that know was who her she control was. Verse. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So the the flow and the voices and that stuff she does leaps off the track, grabs your attention. Mm-hmm. What does she say? She was just I barring sho- it up. I, I, absolutely. I just showed up at the video with MIA wearing Giuseppe Sonati. Those are not good shoes, right? In in a car, right? I don't give a fuck about your Lamborghini. I make more than you. No, you don't. No, you don't. At that time, you did not make she more. She said she had 50000 for yeah, No, she did not at that time. Not, <laughs> so I'm like. Whoa, whoa, I, wait, wait, hold on. Hold I, li- on. I, like, I like truthful disses, right? Even if you're talking to nothing. diss. Well, I mean, it, it is was a, a, it's it was a disc both. to the culture, right? Like, I'm the shit. Like, I have a million yeah. dollars. It's nothing to say I have a million. Right? You said I want a million dollars, right? That was dope, right? Yeah. You say I have a million dollars and you're living your mom's. That's whack, right? I, I, now, I agree with that. Yeah. N- that's just lying. <laughs> especially in the context of on that song, Jay-Z said, uh, my Achilles heels, I don't get enough love. That is People, I heard, I heard somebody that's a talk. Line. That is a line. I heard, I heard people talk about that verse negatively on Jay Z's verse. I saw a lot of that's people. That's insane. And I was like, what? That's one of that's one of my favorite verses. It's Jay-Z. incredible. I mean, like, like that's Jay Z. Like monsters, ghouls, goblins, like being open about his heart. Like, yeah. yo, I don't get enough love. But and he talked about. I mean, I've talked to him about like his life changed when yeah. his father left the home. Mm-hmm. Right in search of whoever killed his uncle, Jay Z's uncle, whatever. But like his his he never wanted to get hurt like that again. Right. So what we read as cool is cool, but it's also him shielding his heart so that he doesn't get hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and he referenced that. Which is a lot of black men in general. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And y'all were like, oh my god, Nicki Minaj can change octaves on her voice. I'm like, that's a party trick. What Jay Z said is so important. I think this is my my biggest issue with uh, lyrics and writing with people and the subjectivity of it all mm. is relatability. When you relate to something, you go ham on how great it is because you relate to it. Now, for sure, a woman, fifteen year old girl whose life is not less important than a thirty nine or thirty five or t- no, <laughs> year old man. No. Or a 12-year-old or 6-year-old uh, boy. These are all lies, right? That 15-year-old girl is like, oh, my God. 
She just said she got 50,000 for a verse. She, she said, whip flash, pink ass, you know what I'm saying? She's saying all this stuff and using all these voices, she's going crazy. And I understood it the same way that I understood M E T H O D, man, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think we can equate those two things when it comes because it's re- that line, those lines are about relatability more so than a bar. <laughs> Okay. Be- those two oh, lines specifically. Also, now, if you have bars, I'm that's objectivity to me. I remember a long time ago, Lior Cohen told me that they think a lot about what will 16 and 17-year-old boys say to each other, right? Mm-hmm. And nobody gets points from your friends saying, Jay-Z did it again. Like, yeah, we all know Jay. Now, you show up to your friend group mm-hmm. online, in person, whatever, and you go, yo, this chick... You never heard of murdered it on this song. You get points in your crew for that. Like if they listen to it, like, yo, she does smack. That is the shit. I, I'm, a, I'm gonna push back on that and say that that's the same. Like I, I did the Lil Wayne verse. Lil Wayne is 40 years old, maybe 41, right? I think he's better than he's ever been now than like lyrically. Okay, and he's already did so much, right? Yeah. People still talk about that. I talk about it in a certain way, and the shit's like going viral, right? Dog, the way you broke down the Wayne verse was yeah. so brilliant, and like you Appreciate took it that. to a different level. I, even Wayne fans like me were like, I did not realize that Wayne was doing something that complex as what you pointed out. Yeah. Where you're like, it's a spider verse, like, <laughs> yeah. what? It, it. I mean, to, to me. Whether how, yeah, it's hella complex in the in the sense of like that shit's built into him, all that stuff's built into him. He's like, yo, spider, eight legs, say spider eight times. The the spider verse is a spider verse as far as like the universe, right? And then spider verse uh, in as far as sixteen or eight, I think I think it was twelve bar verse, uh, twelve bar verse with uh, using the word spider in it. So having that complexity and using liter- literary devices like a motif or or anything like that to communicate things is built into us. And I'm saying just to go back to the discussion we're having is like, if you talk about it in a certain way, it doesn't matter who it is. It's, it's hot. And I think that we just never heard anything like that with Nicki Minaj. So that's why we were. So do you, so you had a great conversation about the big three nowadays being Travis Scott, Tyler, the creator and little baby. Because you're saying Drake, J. Cole, and was it Kanye? Kendrick. Kendrick are yeah, yeah. The, the a previous generation. Not that they're over. They, but, I think they're the initial big three when you really think about it. But they, but that's 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 a, yeah. the chapter before. They're yeah, still yeah. rocking, but the current chapter, do you so you still think it's Tyler the Creator, Travis Scott, and Lil Baby are now? Um I I remember doing that video and I was like, that that was a good those three were a good idea as far as at the time, because I think that was 2022. I may have said that. Uh, I still think Travis Tyler and look, Lil Baby got the street still. I think there's other people bubbling up, but Tyler's everything to so many people. The, and so the, is the, Travis. The creative, the creative. He's a barometer. Yeah. For so many people. Yeah. In innovator. He's, he's taken Pharrell and Kanye's space. In, in the in the, the world super the creative person yeah. and then you got the street streets with little baby and then you got uh uh Travis is is the commercial success and like what everybody like you want to buy his his shoes he's like the combination of the streets he can do ads with McDonald's exactly. and Nike and yeah I thought it was crazy at the Grammys he's throwing chairs around angrily which I'm like I feel you punk I rock I get it but I'm like a black man so big that you could be black male angry at the Grammys and it's all good. It's all good because they understand that, that like his shows are like, I've been to a couple of shows of his, like we played um, a festival that he headlined and it was, um, the show was great. It was like a punk show the way that people respond to him. And he's, and he comes from that um, perspective of like, let's take this hip hop and make it punk. Like they'll open up the pit and and all that type of stuff. So seeing that to me is great because I love punk, punk music. So what's your top five all time? First of all, that's a forever changing list. 
For sure. That is a forever changing for, list. For sure. And I think that's it the should fair be. way. That's why I think the fair way to assess it where it's like, oh, my, this is mine. But uh, uh, still have Jay-Z number one. Jay-Z's number one still. I have 3K in there. Okay. Um, Not necessarily top two. You're just putting them I'm in putting, a top five. I'm putting five. I'm putting Eight. five out there. Okay. And But one, J I could say Jay-Z's one. For sure. Lil Wayne has moved up for me. Into the top five. Yes. Good he's for you. Up, he's moved up for me. I feel the same way, and I have felt afraid to really own it because there's so there is Wayne hate people from try. people who aren't really listening to Wayne. Exactly. I I you asked me last year, I wouldn't say that. But if you're still doing this at this level, I can't, I can't talk to you. Like, don't talk to me if you don't understand what Lil Wayne's doing. It becomes a LeBron sort of thing. Like, he's been yes. doing it at a very high level for a very long time. That's exactly it. But but then there's staples. Like, Biggie's always going to be there, and MF Doom is a favorite of mine that I can't. For sure. I can sure. never, like. So that, and that's recently. So Kendrick is not in your top five? He's six right now. And Nas? Nas is, pro is in the 10, yeah. Okay. Wow, rough to have Nas that low because Nas is another one. Long term career. La Nas is like, come on, like it's Nas, right? It's just that I can't put him above because we're talking favorites right now. Okay. Because I do think that there's kind of an, obje an objective top five. <laughs> to oh, a oh what's the objective? What's your I do objective? think that there's an objective. The like objective it, top five is J1, Nas 2. The, the J, Na, no, J, Biggie, Nas. After that, I'm going with, I think. I think objectively, Kendrick is five. My four, who am I? I don't put Pac in the top five objectively. No. But, uh, I can't think of four. So Kendrick might go Cube? Up. No. Damn, that was <laughs> he disrespectful. Made a face, like, <laughs> that was disrespectful. Like, that was, that was hella disrespectful. disrespectful. <laughs> that was hella disrespectful. <laughs> I'm saying, no, Cube is, Cube is objectively to me uh, a top 10. You say, is 3K your fourth? Three, yeah, I don't know why or I thought Wayne. about 3K. 3K, but the only reason why I don't objectively put 3K, because he's he's my two favorite, but the only way I don't objectively put 3K in uh in the top five is because of he dropped the flute album. Like where's what? How You're much, taking points away because of the objectively, flute album? Objectively, objectively, people all know that Andre 3000 is that guy. Yeah. Like he's there's yeah. Wayne, like technical, yeah, but there's sure. Wayne is Andre 3000. Yeah. yeah, we all know that. And but, he's my number two. But He's he's actually kind of my number one, but but the okay. uh, uh, I think that we need to look at body of work individually. I do believe believe that Biggie, as a rapper who I knew, yeah, and loved three albums, yeah, but they're his and albums. I, and, and, but I'm and I'm giving him I'm giving him two for a double album. It's really two albums. There's enough of like. I did a joint over here with 112 and this that we can accept and make yeah, whatever. Yeah, I, don't even, I don't count features. But let's say, yeah, but well, why not? Of course. I count features as features. F features count. Features Everything are you all do star in games. No. Features no, are all star games. No. They're all star the MVPs and all star no, games. No, at the worst, it's an away game. It's like, no, it's, it's not it's an not, away game. It, 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 of course, features count. Every time you're on the mic counts. No, Every time I, I said what they are, though they're they're your all star. Like where are your championships? Classic albums are championships, and getting to the playoffs is having albums I, out. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I would think you have a chance to have a championship. Every time you touch the mic. I'm putting be DK. It a mixtape. Be it you jumped on somebody else's album. You made a huge deal about 3K on Donda, which is Kanye's album. But the verse is in fucking credible. Like I said, and that goes number, on the resume. He was num he's three K's been number one for me. But since, it can't be like since we two thousand since two thousand one. But we as rappers as a rap king, we're all over the place. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, he he what what Jay Z spat in the booth at at uh, Rap City. Yeah, that counts. No. Then what are you talking about? How no. does it not count? No, it doesn't count. The no. freestyle that you did on Sway or on Funkmaster Flex that was amazing, that counts. Oh, no, okay. We're saying how does it count? The value of it. That's what I'm saying. I, I, does it count? Be like, if you say some whack shit on Rap City, see, you said some whack shit on here's Rap part City. Of the, here's part of the thing for me. Okay. That we are bigger than what the corporations are rubber stamping. 
right? Are you talking about with the album conversation? Like yes. that's, that's a corporate ex- Yes, like I went to Sony. This is what they accepted. This is what they put out. This is I'm like Sony does not get a vote in how dope you are. You went on I love that you said that. Wu-Tang's I, album, you went on a mixtape. Uh-huh. I mean like like the career of Joe Budden, if mm-hmm. we just look at the above ground label music, it's just okay. You start to look at the other shit that he did. Yeah. He's a very serious MC. Mixtapes count. That's what I'm saying. Mixtapes count very uh, because it's a body of work of, of what you did. And now to talk about the, the the label thing, it is in being in major label system. Republic, Universal Republic. We got signed the same time uh my band, my alternative rock band, got signed the same time as the weekend. Right? Look where the weekend is at. Huge. Nobody knows what my <laughs> my band is. The label system really can either put you out or put you down. The thing is, if you have the luck, a little bit of luck, and the determination, ambition to be able to put out a classic album yeah. under a label system. Do you know how great that is? That's such an achievement to be able to do. That. I agree. That is ridiculous because you're going against so many things when it comes to making something within the system and all these people's ideas and stuff like that, and you still make a classic album. But then it's- when you sneak over to the other studio and jumped on somebody else's record— you spat hot it's fire. It's a little easier. It's a little easier. How is it easier? It's you. Lil and Wayne I'm, will tell you it's easier. It's, it's you easier to Mike. do a feature. I don't have to. I don't have to think of the concept. But What's the concept? You, because you also are doing the same thing. You're you're jumping on Snoop's yeah, record. Yeah, yeah. You're jumping on Lil Baby's record. This shit counts. It. I never, right, let me, I didn't say it didn't count. Let's let's, let, let's shift for a second because you talked about your top five, your favorites. But I'm curious to hear your metric. What do you? What are the things that you use? To define who you're putting where, and no, that that I don't mean like Biggie had a great bout, blah, 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 but like you're talking. Okay, I listen to flows, lyrics, yeah. p- you know, point. What what are you, what are your what are the things you're really Te- focusing on? Technique, flow, uh, your content, uh, chips, championships, classic albums, and uh, your impact and influence. I think all those things ma- matter. And that's why even sometimes I think about not so much sales, but like that comes into play as far as when it comes to impact. If you're penetrating culture, that matters a lot as well. The one I I have one problem with or I would put so many other MCs in the objective space. I have a problem space. considering sales. Because you know impact not so much sales is what I'm saying. Okay, impact because this person within, might have a number of sales, but, but but impact within what? Within what we mean when we say the culture, black culture, hip hop culture, or um, humanity. See, but that but that's where that's where I start to get into a problem because when you are impact for you to impact like Drake to get to six, seven, eight, nine million sales, yeah, most of those are white people. Yeah, most of those are not. When you get past three million. You're selling. Well, that's why Kendrick is in the to me objectively in a top five conversation because he's impacting with message with content okay. and culture. He's he's a backpack. He is. But I vote. I want us yeah. who love and live hip hop. We vote, right? I give no tacit vote to white people who don't care. So if you're right, so if but that's we, not giving them a if, vote. It is if we if we include sales or impact, which part which is another way of talking about sales, uh-huh. At a certain level of sales, upper echelon sales, now white people are now white people get to vote. And I'm like, no, 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 y'all don't get to vote in no way, shape, or form. Why? Because they're not part of the culture. The culture should be deciding all the other elements you talked about okay. are the culture talking about we respect Jay-Z's flow, we love Kendrick's content, yeah, yeah, we yeah. love what but then this guy is in the conversation because he sold eight million records. So he's got four million white people who probably own one yeah. or two other rap albums. But he also has four million other him? people, black black people and other people who might like it. No, and, and I'm I, I, so the impact is impact. I don't want to can, can talk about sales at all. No, but yet you because you you put it into the uh, racial aspect, and I realize if you take the race out and you're just talking about impact, it matters. So if there's safe, it's just black people, and it's one mil. You you did platinum off of black people. You impacted. Oh, for sure. So no, that's I'm, what I'm, I'm talking, talking with about. you there. That's what I'm talking the same. So so impact matters, but I do look at like just because you have 
10 million, 30 million sales of something like that across the globe. I don't care because who you like, who are you impacting does does matter. That's yeah. what you're saying. Who yeah. are you impacting? But I'm talking about people who's clearly impacting the culture. Okay. And because impact also plays into influence. And you talk about and you said technique, flow, s- impact. What were the other two? Content. Technique, uh, flow, content, uh, impact, influence. And what was the other one I said? Oh, classic album. Classic album. Classic albums, I think, because I think that it's such a feat to do that. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. So within flow. And speaking of, of that, M, M has been in my top five throughout M. the whole years, Eminem, but, but, but throughout my entire life until recently where other artists I had to like, I had to think about, yo, Lil Wayne, I, I actually have to move this person. Oh, Kendrick, I got to move. And things got moved around. But, but Biggie is a challenge because we agree the man is amazing. It's not his fault that his career was cut short. Yeah, yeah. But it was. So now we have Nas with, say, five classic albums. I'm just throwing out a number. I don't I don't know if it's five, but it could be, right? Nas with five classic albums? Could be four. Like, let's, let's, let's say four. Let's, let's say four. Let's say four. <laughs> I, I've, I, I, I haven't really counted. Not, right? I count Illmatic for two. So go ahead. For we'll sure. Go five. <laughs> for Illmatic sure. Illmatic count as two. For sure. Yeah, I mean, right. you know, Jay-Z has, you know, five, five. whatever. Right? I mean, Nas, uh, Wayne truly has passed. I mean, like, ha- Big can't make any more. Right? And he's always stuck at two slash three forever. Yeah, but It's a the fairly low number at that impact, rate. Impact, influence, flow. But the other rate. thing is that all, all off, off the charts for me. So that's why it's mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. objective. I'm like, come on. The sound of the voice itself, right? Yeah. Because that was not one of your metrics, but I'm sure that is one I, of your I, metrics. I, I don't think sound of voice is, is a metric because because it's it is a God given like type of thing. But I don't I don't make that an actual metric. I mean, I think that's super important. Certain people. We both yeah, know. Chuck D. I would listen to Q-Tip read the phone book, right? We would listen Period. to Busta Rhymes read the phone book, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other people n- need to actually come with some stuff because that is not one of their strongest Completely. points. That's why it's like, but that matters. It. I said it matters, but I'm saying I don't. I don't put that in my uh, in my <laughs> critique. For my metrics, I don't do that. I got my own. <laughs> no, I'm fucking with you. So, so you've talked a lot on your page and in your music about how a rapper makes money, especially an yeah, indie yeah. rapper. Mm-hmm. Um, don't want to ask you about your specific finances, but can you just help <laughs> folks understand how an indie rapper makes money and what are, what are what are the streams that are really going to make it a career? Um. If you're owning your music first, so if you're one, people always hear the term owning masters, owning, owning the publishing. indie rapper is going to own their masters more likely. Most likely. Yeah. And but a some, label rapper is probably not. Yeah. But it depends. It depends what you call an independent rapper too. Because some people like, if you have a distribution deal, you own your own indie label and you own your, your, your masters, but maybe you have a, a publishing deal and they have a publishing. It's like, is that person independent? You might be with a mate. I was like that major publishing deal and independent uh, record deal. So I own my masters, but I'm sharing publishing. So it's like, am I independent or am I with a... You see what I'm saying? You're sure. dancing around, and that happens a, a lot of time. And if you put your music on, on Spotify, yeah, you own it, but you put your music on Spotify, the labels own Spotify. It's like, depends on what you think about what independence really is. But to say it, uh, so you own your music, masters... You want to get syncs. You want to have synchronizations. That's where which means licensing your music to film, TV, commercials. So it's just like I own a house. I let you rent out my house. I own this song. Yeah, you can put this on the Super Bowl. Put in your Super Bowl commercial. How do you get that? You record a song. How do you get it onto a movie, a television show, or a commercial? The music supervisors that are on those shows are looking for music. You either have an agent push your music to them. There's plenty of resources online to find agents to push push your music, or there's music libraries. Or if you're with a publishing label, they're pitching your music to these uh, TV shows and, and uh, films. Like I have many songs in Netflix movies. But TV there's an shows, ecosystem of of middle folks who will yes. try to say. Check out this King Green song. Check out this exactly. song from so and so. Yeah, and 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 there's a certain, you know how, uh, in 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 movies, there's it's the type of music you're putting in there is not just because it's a hit song. No, no, it makes sense with the visual or yeah. the content or concept, the feel. Yeah, exactly. So it's like a lot of times, 
you're making the same trap song all over and over again, that sleepy, uh, dirty sprite type of trap music, maybe that doesn't make sense for a lot of films, a lot of movies and all that stuff. So it's like knowing what music makes sense in in these things also matters. Does it matter which is which of the three television uh, uh commercials movie or commercials commercials is commercials, the best commercials or a big movie that's the be- yeah. that's that's the best or if you put a song in or if you have a song in a movie with like a huge song and then you say this uh MFN which is basically saying when you email back to a a supervisor or something and say this I want what you uh MFN means that you're going to get the same thing that whatever else song is in there so if Beyonce's in there and she's getting a million dollars MFN I want to you really want my song I want a million too so more that favored could, nations. Yeah. So we could we could get into to um so but I would say commercials, really. Commercials is like that's the goal. That'd be my biggest paydays. Yeah. Like you're talking about things that could go 250, 250k for like it's a spot. And then uh, or or commercial like a uh the advertisement for a show. I forgot what you call that, where the show like a trailer. Trailer, not not a trailer, but the one a trailer, but the the advertisement always gets played and played, but not exactly a trailer. It's, they have a different word for it once it's okay. a TV show. But a trailer, let's just say that a, a trailer commercial um, is that can be good too because it's playing over and over again. You get played every single time. What other streams are going to be important? Uh, if you get your if you get your Spotify up, if there's people who are making a lot of money off of your streams when you actually own the music and get the uh, money out. So that's the other stream of income, just streaming and selling merchandise. And merchandise to, today is the physical media, the song, the CD, the vinyl, the cassette tapes. Like, so my cassette tape is thirty bucks. It, it sold out of my cassette tapes. Not a lot of them, but people, there's an appetite for it. And then um, uh, the next, so it's licensing and owning the music and streams and selling merchandise. That's really it, as well as sponsorships. If you were artists i also think even though it was kind of a paradox in the statement in my song where it says don't be a rapper be a youtuber it's yeah. like you got to think about yourself differently nowadays as a brand the, i don't like the word brand i feel like that's almost even archaic like branding is for cattle like you are a a creator and you're a creative but you're really just an artist and you need to think about what that means in a way in a da vinci type of way it's like oh i'm able to be used in these many different ways so when you're making, being a creator or a content creator or something like that, if you're thinking about it as an artist, you're like, oh, how do I stay in my space but live in this world? Because we've been doing it for so long. It used to have to travel. We're talking about no music, no records. You have to travel, promote your music. Then records came out. You travel and be like, hey, you can get this record and take it home because you just heard it. Now, then it went to different media. They went to video. Video right. killed the radio. Then right. video. Right. And then now it's the internet. There's no difference. You just have to figure out how to be an artist on these platforms. Because it's just doing a music video made no sense to artists at the time. They're like, all these kids and their music videos. It made no sense to older artists. They were talking about music videos. And that's how people talk about TikTok. And, uh, it's important short for you as an artist to be a, a presence on TikTok and relating to your fans in that way. For me? Yeah. It's imp- I think that's a... It's a, a Outlet for me specifically is a creative outlet, or it's very a prof- much so. Me or, talking about rap or a professional. Nobody to talk about rap. <laughs> with. Is it a professional outlet? I mean, it's a it's, it's a billboard. Look at me. Very much a professional outlet. I think they're one and the same. That's what I'm trying to say. Is like yeah. that's like saying is is it is it a creative outlet to put your song on the radio or a professional one? It's the same. That's how I see it. I see the same question. It's like it's both because you want to put your radio song on the radio to get some spins. Is it a creative outlet to get it on Spotify? Because you can sell your song hand to hand. You can put it on your website and be like, hey, go to my website and get it. I don't want to put it out on um, Spotify. So I think if you are truly an artist, you think about how it's a creative outlet for you versus it just being a professional one. If it's just a professional one, I'm not into it. It doesn't make any sense. Right. A profession. Right. I see some people have a page where they seem to be just replaying their old videos, let's say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, like, like music videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are making authentic, je- original content that that aligns me with, he's a hip-hop person, he loves hip-hop, he's part of the culture, he's thinking about it, right? He's giving me the green, he's giving me some comedy. Yeah, yeah. Right, but serious, smart, intelligent thought. 
Yeah, all, everything I am. Right, everything you are. Yeah. Right, so so that is bringing me into you. That's the whole, That's it's just an outlet. And I, I like, first thing I was doing before I was rapping, I developed a mastery of causing verbal catastrophe. Before I wrote that line, <laughs> I was drawing comic books and selling them to my classmates. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm drawing comic books on loose leaf paper, selling them to my classmates for a dollar, and I, I had the, I was like, yo, I could do this. I love this. This is, is uh, the character was called Dark Phantom. And I actually kind of copied it off my, my boy's character. His character was Fan, Phantom. And I was like, yo, I'm gonna make Dark Phantom because he's black. Because <laughs> he's black. Because we need a black superhero. Right. But um, so I make the, and I've sold it to all my classmates. And I'm, I'm, there's freaking small, uh, like Catholic school. There's like 20 kids. I got $20. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and I'm like, and then I'm buying them candy with their own money, and it's it just out here splurging. But it's both of those things were creative and professional. Like I, I don't, I never thought about things in a sure in a in a um, different ways. Like if I'm into it, I want to do it. I saw this MC spit the other day, it's the three four minute rhyme. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how much time is he sitting at home memorizing that? Because he could probably. Do six, ten, twenty songs, right? I mean, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. are you sitting at home practicing so that these songs are memorized so you can? No, no. I'm, I'm not a. I, I don't memorize things. <laughs> <laughs> like my favorite Jay Z line is, "I don't, I don't record. I recall because it's so deep on on so many levels. It's like I'm, I'm recalling these things because I actually lived this life. Right. And saying that as well as like, no, I'm just recalling these things. Like I'm, I'm bringing them back and not like going through this process, this technical process of recording, right? So I'm in that space where is, and I heard Wayne say that too, it's like, I mean what I say. So when I hear the first line, of, I, I perform a lot, right? So when I hear the first line of the song, I'm like, oh, I'm back in that space. And then all the words just start coming. But if I miss the first line, I'm blank. Really? I am blank because I'm not, I have a horrible memory. I was at a, I was at a show with a major artist we've talked about today, yeah. Uh, and I was with their A and R, and they were like, they mess up, they forget all the time, and I'm like, really? And they're in like, they're like, watch, probably like the second half of the second verse of a big popular, and popular the second, song, yeah. And they kind of mumbled their way through, and if I hadn't really really been paying attention, I would have missed it. That no one ever so notices so live. You, you do the forget. best, tr the best trick for a rap. All rappers do this. The best trick is you on stage and you're saying a line, then you see a fan rapping all your words, <laughs> and then you and then you hype them up like, oh yeah, I'm gonna show you some love, ah. and and then you catch because you about to forget. Oh, you catch. Oh, that's where I'm at in the line, and you start getting back. In but the when line. you get on sway or flex or whatever, right? Oh, like, but this, we can hear. I know. Yeah. So so. Do you, so do you do you do you just remember all your things because it's so important to you? You don't yeah, need to things, spend time. The things that, there's certain things that I just remember. Certain things I, I don't. So you don't need to spend time learning this. But do you not spend time practicing the songs where like only when I do videos? So that's the best part about videos. It's like like I know million uh, one million dollars my new song because I've been make, making so many of these short little reels and content about it. So I, I could recite the verse off of it. Whereas like a lot of times. Like, if I, I just wrote two songs yesterday. I don't know one word. <laughs> you couldn't do those songs. I have, I'm, I'm trying to think of it right now because you were saying that, saying this. I'm like, I can't even think. I can't even think of the first line. <laughs> Cannot even think of the first line. <laughs> but, it's, but, but it's like when, when it's, but as a performer, I'm, I'm a great performer. I love performing. It feels like natural for me to be on stage. So it's, so it's like, it just comes out. It's like, I don't know. It's muscle memory. It just comes out, especially that's where I practice. When you practice your live set, that's where you start practicing. So is you. there a way of practicing? Because you used to play basketball, right? Yeah, for sure. So still, right. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you go in a gym by yourself and put up some free throws or put up some, right, some corner shots, right? I mean, like when you be, when you when you think about it, though, and, and you're right, but that's when you're young. You Not a lot of OGs practice. Uh, like wow. at the basketball court, not a lot of old dudes. Be, they just go on Tuesday night when everybody goes to the gym. <laughs> so do you practice? But I do practice rapping. Do, I do practice rapping by rapping all the time. So if I'm so there isn't a practice element of your day. You're just immersed there in has, doing there was, it. There, yeah, there there was, and I I'm not realizing it as practice right now because it's such a 
regular thing of the day. I get up, I write a rhyme. So you got to get up and let something come out. Every day? Probably at least five times a week. So this is your first motion of the morning. Not the first motion of the morning. But but it's my first thing with my first creative thing that I do in the day. So because he, I make music. So he gets every up, th- you know, drink some water, whatever. Wake up, hopefully work out if I'm if I'm diligent, and then I go get me some coffee because I'm Haitian and I like me some coffee and some <laughs> bread. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, I watch a podcast while I'm eating my breakfast, my and uh, or listen to one, and then I'm making music around. Write a rhyme. Start just writing to... rhymes, and it's, it starts. I just want to write a rhyme. Especially recently, I've been writing rhymes in a notepad and not even putting them on a song, just because I wanted to feel how that feels again. And that practice is. And I'm thinking about. Oh, I want every line to have a bar. I want every line to be this way. I want to use imagery more so in this one. I'm gonna use a motif, like my song "Love Song." I'm like, I'm gonna use a motif, but it's such a quick thought. I don't think it doesn't take that much for me. To, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, I want to make this song about something. And it's always a, it's always whatever I'm feeling at the time because I don't know how to make something that I don't feel. So, yeah, that's and I just want to experiment. So I experiment with different types of literary. So devices. it is practice. It's practice, but I just when you were saying that, I just realized like it's because I do it so often. Yeah, that it's just my nature. Yeah, that, to 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 like oh let me use this this time and let me change. I'm using this type of uh, uh, language with this one and I, oh I'm gonna write a song called Before, and it's going to be, um, it's, it's going to use Anaphora. So it's going to say, before I had a car, I had a bike and a skateboard. Before I had, uh, uh, before I liked girls, I had all the toys I could afford. Before this, but, and then at the end it's like, but I don't remember anything before you. I wanted to use Anaphora for that verse. I just did that just because I wanted to do that. Versus, and how much that communicates to somebody. I know that communicates to somebody in an easier way than just talking about how much I loved this girl. I said, look at all these things that I that I loved and these these uh, antithesis type of things. I, I loved this before. I loved that. I loved this before that. But I've never loved anything before you. You know what I'm saying? Or like you. Now you're like, oh, that I look for aha moments. Mm. Those 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 like you're doing something up, doing something else, and you look up. I want that to happen. Mm. That's what I'm thinking about. It's like, oh, did he just say? Oh, I just got this. Whenever you get it, that's that's so, so. But that's in practice. But it's just so ingrained in me that I don't even just do it. that. Do yeah, that. Yeah, do, yeah. do. But that's actually a great writing practice. Yeah. Is there it is a writing practice? Yeah. It, but is there a a mouth or vocal practice so that you can spit with the precision that you want? Only, only lot. Only when I'm doing like when I was touring a lot. Um, seven years was touring my band i would do vocal exercises but singing vocal exercises different yeah it's a different thing it's, it's so was, i was doing that but it's helpful for both because you're like S- so i'm 15 i want to be an mc mm-hmm. i got some skill but i'm not necessarily the number one draft pick in mm-hmm. the neighborhood but maybe i can make it what do i need to be doing to get there the two things you need to do is google literary devices understand them there's a list of them people have been asking me this i need to like sell a literary device game i'm gonna make one <laughs> definitely writing a book but i'm i'm a um uh to get that literary devices get a list because there's so many of them understand those as well as read dictionaries read a dictionary that is very Why? important because you need a uh, diction you have to have vocab you need to have words to call on or you're just regurgitating what you hear and what you, the input is more important than the output. The input. input is way more important than the output. If you consume a lot of media, you are going to be a better rapper because you consume a lot, period. The more you consume, the better you're going to be. Able to put it. And that media can be from all movies, TV, other artists. But if you're listening to other artists and that's how you get to be what you are, you just kind of... The first thing you become is an amalgamation of them in a more of a copy than amalgamation because I think amalgamation is fine being an amalgamation of another a bunch of artists. But yeah, you, so the dictionary is very important if you really care about being a lyricist or an MC, right? I think you need to input more words and watch movies, read books, watch TV. All that stuff matters. 
because you want to be able to call on. I want to call on uh, the Iliad or the Odyssey while calling on uh, uh, Living Single. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. then and then make a mix. How did I mix those two? And then and that's why to bring Wayne back into this. That's why Wayne's crazy. He will bring up things that mm-hmm. that are mm-hmm. out of this world. It's like, why do you even know about this? Right, for sure. You know what I'm saying? For and sure. then simplify it that any idiot could understand. What's interesting, we've seen Jay-Z grow in what he's talking about, right? Early yeah, yeah. on, he's he's making lots of car references, right? And yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. watch and diamond references. And he grows up into the 40, in his 40s or so, and now he's talking about Warhol and Basquiat yeah, in yeah, the yeah, music yeah. and making little uh, uh, artists or different like clearly i'm i'm talking about wealth shit now yeah. i'm not yeah, talking well, about rich shit anymore yeah, yeah. generational um, wealth time right <laughs> which is legacy, that, that, legacy. <laughs> which is an interesting part of what you're talking about yeah yeah where where it's like you're th- you're the growth in content versus the growth in uh, writing and and seeing that and that's why those things change like, is you, your writing growing but you're already at the end of your, you're at a certain end, you personally, in terms of acquiring technique. If I'm 15, right? Like yeah, I yeah. still, I'm, I'm still growing, right? Like if you were 15, to a 15 year old ball player, you'd be like, you need to get up a hundred shots or a thousand shots every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And go to different parks. And so what part of it is that? Like you need to be rapping every day. You need oh, to be ciphers. You, you need to, to be. Every day. Yeah. I'm 15. I'm rapping every day against, and, and battle rapping was a thing. First of all, my respect for battle rap is out of this world. But yeah. battle rapping was a thing. So I was battling at 15. So I'm going to, uh, 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 I'm a sophomore. I'm going to go to the senior room because I'm nice. So I'm like, yo, let me see what's good with, with y'all seniors. Oh, he's this kid's from New York. And then he hit me with this this line. I got more sales than Bloomingdale's or whatever. <laughs> he hit me with this line. And it was like, oh. And then I was, I was, and he had like a, I don't know why he was from New York and he had like a grill. It was mad weird. But uh, <laughs> back then, too, uh, he had he had a grill and I hit him with a line talking about, oh, that looks like tinfoil. Everybody's like, oh, you if you don't experience that, like, rapping every day and, like, defending yourself even, too, in, in, that type of, in that type of sense, or writing songs. Maybe you don't want to be that type of rapper. You got to write the songs every day. Like, you write that story every day if you want to be a writer. Like, if you want to uh, be an interview interviewer i'm sure you gotta ask a lot of questions <laughs> you gotta learn how to ask questions so you do you have to rap well, the, part of the brilliance of the battle rap situation yeah. is people will respond right you talk about aha moments people yeah. will respond when you hit that dope punchline, and people are gonna oh like right? comedy yes you get and the reward right away that, and you know it works that that yeah. right it's like theater right the moment you did that mm-hmm. they applauded they cried whatever you knew right i remember when i was in college writing for the college newspaper i wrote something wednesday night mm-hmm. on thursday people are like yo that was crazy that was brilliant that was amazing that was terrible whatever yeah 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 and i'm like yo i have a direct i understand a mm-hmm. direct i just wrote that and i'm just now getting feedback like this i understand and in a battle rap situation i'm like i understood when i said that the crowd went nuts. This is the kind of thing that gets them. Exactly. So nowadays, what I would equate to that is put your song out. Mm-hmm. Go on your TikTok, go on your Instagram or your Snapchat, make a little song, write a little rap, and let your friends hear it. Let everybody hear it, especially putting it on the internet because someone's going to be like, that's trash. <laughs> of course. Someone's going to tell of you course. it's trash, and you're like, I need to make sure that that guy doesn't think it's trash. Till a point, Till you get to a point where you understand how good you are and what you're doing. So like now, if someone says something's trash, I'm like, you probably don't understand me. Like someone said that the uh, was talking about the Lil Wayne line with the spider things. Like that's trash. That's such a uh, uh, elementary way of looking at things. And I was like, you make no sense. But in my in my brain, I was, I hit him. I told him what his analogy made no sense. But Lil Wayne has a line in six foot. I'm saying everything about Wayne right now. But <laughs> the other line in uh, six foot seven is. Uh, what was it like? It's like you you're probably you probably stand under me if you don't understand me. Right. Right. That's crazy. Right. You know what kills me is um <laughs> real G's move in silence. No, that's like crazy. Lasagna. And I see 
a big six foot tall clump of lasagna <laughs> moving silently down the road. Because lasagna would move silently. That's what you thought. That's what I see. I'm like, I know like the G is silent, but I'm like, no, no, no. Like the lasagna is it's, coming it's to get silent. you. <laughs> Real cheese moving silent like lasagna. I didn't hear crazy. Like, what is this? Like, oh, I'm all covered in lasagna. <laughs> I can't believe that's what you <laughs> like. That's where you was at. You was like, "Yo, this lasagna would move slowly. Lasagna, if it was it coming would, at you. and it's gonna get you, and you're not." Gonna <laughs> that line hit me right away, and I, I, I. That's another one where I stopped everything. I was like, "That is crazy," and that's the simplicity that we talk it's about. A big thing. tall glass of some shit you can't pronunciate. <laughs> That shit killed me. It's crazy. Because sometimes when guys or women come up with lines that show, well, he could only come up with that if he has a Patek. You wouldn't have just looked at it online. Like, he has a Philly Patek, and he can see, see it. Yeah. the K is turned in a certain weird way. And, like, damn. Like, damn. Like, that level of detail kills me. Is that's that's it? That's that MC shit. It's like even even if you're talking about a Patek or uh, you you it doesn't matter what you're talking about. I saw this thing about a guy. It was in New York, and the guy was like, uh, "What's a rapper and what's an MC?" And he, and he was like, "Is Ice Spice a rapper? Or MC? He was like, she a rapper? A rapper is someone that does it for money. An MC is somebody that does it." He said, which I don't agree with, but an MC is someone that does it for the culture. Mm -hmm. Like that's too mm -hmm. ambiguous, and yeah. weird. I don't know what you're talking about, really. Yeah. I just call it. That's why I've been I MC is almost an archaic word where I'm like. I just say lyricist, even though I do mean M MC. It's yeah. like you you have intention in your work and you have a craft, certain level of craftsmanship. Same way an actor or a thespian. It's just a fancy word for an actor. But uh, uh, you were talking about uh, the, the paddock thing. It's like you could talk about anything and be that high level lyricist. It could be the most surface level content in the world, but your lyrical capability could be next level. Well, if you're lyrical capable, but if you're if you're – eye for detail as a writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you would notice that thing. Your line about shift for a dollar sign. <laughs> That's a bar. I, was, I, was, I impressed myself with that bar. <laughs> you said shift for a dollar Dollars. sign. And as you pointed out in the video, yeah, shift and the number four gets you the dollar sign. Right. So it was like, wow. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, you're talking there about I was making money this way. Now I have to make money a different way because the tech ended. I'm like, yo, talk about coming up with that line. Um, so that whole thing's a scheme is like, don't be a rapper, be a YouTuber. That sets it up. And I'm thinking about the idea of in real life, I'm thinking about the idea of like, every, I'm making more money making content. Like I'm making content, and then this company wants to pay me. $5, is that true that the con I, making content is doing better than the? I was. This is 2022. Was, we were talking earlier. I was doing things for Amazon Music. I was doing things for Google. I was doing things because my TikTok was blowing up and things like that. And I was doing content for other people and other companies. And I'm like, I got say I got five grand for having my song or five or, uh, grand for having my song in some uh, show or something like that. I got five grand for a video that I made, that 30 second thing of me looking through my phone. You know what I'm saying? And then I did that again and again. And then you're making so much money off of just making content. And I'm like, in my brain, I'm like, wait a minute, am I a rapper or am I a content creator? Mm. To, a, to, a, to a degree. But I'm like, oh, but I'm making some things about rap. So it, it is what it is. And it also made me think about, wait a minute. All rappers are content creators. And sure. this whole idea of content creation came from the film industry because they always talked about their movies as content and sure. the things that they own and creative con stuff they have as content. And it's just another word. It's just a technical business term, stoic term for art, sure. right? Sure. And, I'm, and I'm, when I, I thought about that, that was the whole battle. This is, this is a battle, internal battle that turned into, let me put this battle out in real time in a scheme. Yeah. Like what is a content creator and what is an artist and what does that mean? And it's like, wait a minute, yeah, tech's getting me all this money. I need to move over to to, to work for the tech company. And then I thought about all this. So I'm thinking about tech versus art the whole time, and the shift bar just came because I'm just trying came. to make an entendre, a double entendre that has to do deal with physical reality. I'm 
That was very intentional. That's what you were searching I want to make an entendre that makes somebody have to like do something. Uh And I was like, okay, shift for a dollar sign. I was like, that's crazy. (laughs) I I don't know how it came about, but that intention of knowing that I wanted you to physically have to do something to be able to understand the line made me be able to come up with the line. (sighs) You know, it's, it's, it's such a great line that I'm like, how has nobody ever, uh, a million MCs, nobody ever thought of that? That's that's the best part about a good line. Yeah. And and the, the other best part about it is someone might not understand it or you explain it and they're like, yeah. <laughs> that's nah, my favorite part. Nah. That's my favorite part about a good line because the real G's moving so, so like lasagna. It's the same, I think that's the same uh, level of line. It's like some people listen to that and be like, yeah, that's it, nothing. It's like you don't, no, you, you, don't you couldn't it. do that. What do you call that? Um, which uh, that shift for a dollar sign, hang it up, flat screen. What do you what do you call that device? Shank, shift for a dollar sign, hang it up, flat screen. Which like, like this is like a big thing in the last what 10, 15 years where uh, the the MC will say, you know, you got to do this, and then there's a word that sort of relate. Uh, made the beat and murdered it, Casey Anthony. So that's what, oh, what oh. do you call that? That that's a thing too. Uh, it's because it's it's uh first of all what the, the shift four line is a is on entre- entendre but what you're doing it a lot of times rappers use that like it's like a I like to call it a broken metaphor because the way that you cut it up is it's really just a metaphor but taking out that space the, or the context in a metaphor that you usually have like um, I'm trying to think of one right now because I know what you're saying but I'm trying to think of a line to really do it because shift four dollar sign is not is that's just really it's not the same it's really a dollar. Uh, it's the cadence of what you're talking about. Yeah. But it's really just a double entendre. Yeah. You know, it's I mean, really this that could kind be, of it. I mean, this could be that in any of it. I, I see. It is an entendre with a lot of rap because battle rappers do it all the time. And I that's see. why I kind of took that from battle rapping where they, they're like, it's like a make you shift for a dollar sign. You know what I'm trying to say? It's yeah. like they're, they're, they're I hitting. see this, this is the scheme or this way. It comes up a lot mm-hmm. in the last 10, 12 yeah, yeah, years. Yeah. See, some people do it in a very intelligent way, Wayne being one of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see some people doing it a really dumb way that I'm like, that's a, that's so dumb to, to have, like, take yeah, it yeah. back from that, like literalize your metaphor. Whatever. And I'm, and a lot of times I'm like, that is a big divider for me about the quality of your rhymes of like, if that, that in, yeah, within yeah. that device, if you do it in a creative, interesting way or mm-hmm. a funny way, or if you do it in a really like, Hang it up, flat screen. I'm like, that's 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 dumb. <laughs> Got you. Yeah, yeah, completely. And that's just like, yeah, hang it up, flat screen is just a a a, a metaphor that is that yeah. device. That's the thing that I I wanted to talk about too. Is like, there's literary devices created by hip hop. Like that specific thing that we're talking about has no specific name. Okay. And. What it is is either using a double entendre or a metaphor, but the way that you take away, um, because, you know, like our ass is a simile, and if you just say that it is that, um, let me say, hang it up, I'm a fat, flat screen. Hang it up, because you're a well, flat like screen. Like a flight, like. No, like would be simile, but I'm saying like a metaphor is like, okay. if you, is like, uh, gonna hang you up, you're a f- flat screen. Now I just made you a, a, a metaphor, but you took away that you're a, and made it, uh, yeah. hang it up, flat screen. Yeah. That, off top of my head there isn't anything for that specific thing that only really exists in in rap which i think it's a different type of metaphor and should have its own name i think um we haven't really talked about rakim and i feel like rakim and de la soul are kind of grandfathers of kind of what you're doing or where you sit in the world of hip-hop do you think that's Grandfathers of where I sit, Rock you know him I mean? definitely. Like, Rock him definitely, and I would put Tribe over De La. Okay. So okay, similar, but okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Just because it's, a, I can see the direct like influence in the work from there, who they influenced to who influenced me. Okay. Because if you go Tribe, you get all the way to Outcast and and, and for sure. uh, Pharrell. De La as well, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Same family tree. Same yeah. family, right? Yeah, Native yeah. tongues. Yeah. But um, I'm just thinking about how important they were to. Like Pharrell and, yeah. and, and Outkast. And then Rock Kim, you get Nas, you get Jay, you, you get Wayne, you get Kendrick. I, mean, I don't think that anybody has advanced and, the form of, of rhyming 
as much as Rakim has, as far as taking us from a monosyllabic rhyme at the, mm-hmm. the, the four, right, or the two and the four, yep, yep, yep. to polysyllabic internal rhymes, rhymes about rhyming, thoughts about thinking, at, from a music right? theory it's, it's, it's standpoint, a, from a writing it's standpoint. It's a bigger leap than anybody else has made. He was the iPhone. Yeah. He yeah. He's like, we don't need buttons. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, yeah. That's, that's, Rakim was that. And ever since that, it's just been everybody kind of like building off of that. Building off what agree. he did, for sure. I completely agree with that. And I, I remember having to do my due diligence to understand that. Yeah. As a kid, I remember doing that. And then like, I think it was the 18th letter came out more when I was older or whatever. And my brother was like, wait a minute. You don't remember these tapes? Like, go. He's been doing this. When he rhymed the whole New York, we got Giants and Jets to both Mets and Mets. I was like, that's crazy as a kid. And then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. He's been doing this and, since the 80s? And the God voice, just the oh, sound yeah. of the voice. You, know, you see, I, the voice is such a thing. It is. But it's just like you just, you're just blessed with it. Like, if a rapper has it, like, Biggie's, that's cheating. His voice is cheating. Rakim's voice is, that's like cheating. It's like, I mean, that's like, I mean, you know. LeBron is 6'8". Yeah. Like, that counts. Like, that helps. I mean, it's like... It helps, but that's why you see how people be discrediting LeBron. I guess I'm kind of like that sometimes. You know, people be like, well, he's that big, so of course. People <laughs> be saying that type of stuff. I guess I be hating. <laughs> I be hating on the voice. I mean, you know, yes, certain people are blessed, yeah, but yeah. this is a recorded music industry. Completely. Having a good voice and, matters, definitely. I mean, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, Rock Kim's voice, like... Give me your top five voices in it. Just voices? Just voices. <sighs> top three. The five is always, I don't, we always go with five. It's like, we can't think that crazy. I mean, for sure, Rakim. Mm-hmm. God, this is, a, this is a more difficult question than I need to be it prepared is. for a question like this. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Q-tip for sure. Okay. Um, That's interesting. Because I, I think that he has a, a great voice too. But some people, I feel like a lot of people, when people talk about voices, they talk about the deep or lower register sure. voices. And I'd be For sure. Like, I mean, like, it's, it's it's just such a great, delicious sound, you know? And, like, yeah, a little higher. Jay-Z's a little higher. Yeah. For average, for, uh, for then an MC, than most MCs. I think um, he had to fight through that, for real. Which is, yeah, which is not to... What about X? What about DMX? Voice. Um, I or mean, it's a great voice. You? I'm not putting it in top five of my voices, but it is a great voice. Okay. Um... God, you know, you, I mean, this is this is a larger. This is a lot. This is gonna take me a long. You don't got Chuck D up there, uh, for sure, Chuck D. Um, you know, but you. I mean, I'm just thinking this through right now. I okay, mean, Chuck Jada, D's definitely in my. Jada Kiss just says ha, and I'm like, I'm hype. I'm ready. Let's <laughs> nah, go. Jada Kiss got Let's go. Voice. I mean, his the sound of his throat. It's crazy. You know, I just yeah. for some reason uh, an exhibit song came on the other day. Which one? You know? Uh, I think it was X. Okay. And it's like, yo, that the kid's voice is incredible. As if exhibits, you know, voice and flow was crazy. But Snoop's voice was incredible. Is incredible. Yeah. 100%. And part of what Snoop did, the sound linked the West and the South. You could hear yeah. the South. His people, I think, are Mississippi. Okay. And like, you could hear the South in it. And the drawl and the, and the way he stretched words out and the singing because he because. Loves all old, oldies and all that type of stuff. So he was See, coming there, from that aspect. Right there. It's not just, you're not just talking about the it's, natural born sound when he opens his mouth. The way he uses his voice. Facts. Right? Facts. It's really interesting. Snoop is is up there for me too with, with voices. So is Cube. Like I can't touch down in LA without putting up today's was a good day. Like I, I have to, I have to listen to that song once I touch down. Um, because that it's just so soothing. God, who else? There's just a, a, a lot of people. <laughs> off to, off topic, but because I saw this on you uh, on a clip. So you don't think Leonardo DiCaprio is a good actor? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you don't know, think I Leonardo DiCaprio? It's, funny, is it's a- funny that so many black men in particular <laughs> leapt up to. It's not like I dissed a black man, and yeah. bro was like, "You can't say that about Lakeith." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, uh, I I think for one thing, a lot of people have a hard time dis- distinguishing mm-hmm. uh, a great looking actor. That's wild. From <laughs> no. the quality of the actor, is the person doing things that surprise you? 
right? That like does an actor have to surprise? Yes, I'm talking about like when Daniel Day Lewis yeah, yeah. comes to work. I'm talking about when he shows up on my screen. I am engrossed because every choice he makes is so deep within himself. I'm like, I am following, and he's going to do things. He's going to say things or do things that I'm like, unexpected. Wow. I, I get it. I get it. I get I'm you. surprised. I lo- that tone was crazy. The way you just did that there, I wouldn't have thought. I think that I think that I understand that. And I see the importance in that because I do relate acting and rapping a lot in my brain. So I see that because that's to you is like bars. It's like, oh, I I didn't know that you you could take it there. I didn't know you're going there. So I I get that that relation, but I feel that with DiCaprio's performance in Django, which I think is Quentin Tarantino's only perfect movie that he's got. Oh, he got more perfect. Now, now now you're now you're really stomping into my territory. And yeah, yeah, he got. Wait, I don't think most people can make a differentiation between uh, the lead actors which is part of what I was talking about with Omar and yeah. the character actors. Generally character actors are much better actors than lead actors. I agree with that. Sam. Right. Yeah. Most people don't understand that. And they're like, mm-hmm. well, if he's the lead actor, then he must be the best actor in the film. No, he's no. the one that's going to sell tickets. He's yes. He's a star or <laughs> yeah. she's a star. They're great looking. People will go see the movie because Leonardo is in it. Yeah. He, but the, uh, but bet your bottom dollar, the number two and number three person on the call sheet, usually carry will be better actors than whoever's number one, especially if it's Leo. I'm not saying especially and, if it's and, Leo. And, and look, look, wow. it, we're in a culture of dope or whack. Everything's dope yeah, or whack. Yeah, dope or whack. Yeah. I'm not yeah, saying yeah. that Leo is a whack actor, but when we're talking about um, Denzel, Bell, yeah, when we're talking about Daniel Day Lewis, right? When we're talking about Meryl Streep, mm-hmm. Viola Davis, mm-hmm. Leonardo DiCaprio is not. In this conversation, I completely agree with you. But saying that he was, I thought you said he was whack, or he's not. No, a see, good see, one. right? See, that's I what you said we, he was not a good. That's one. what we hear. No, yeah. I, I think he's not great, and I think that he's had some exciting. He's had roles in exciting movies. I think what Jamie Fox did in Django is much more interesting and powerful and nuanced than what. Leo did. I think also what Sam Jackson did Sa- in no. Django. Wait, when we're talking about Samuel Jackson, I think he's probably the most underrated actor to me. Right. I mean, right. We put level. him in that group. So now yeah. we've both agreed on five men and women. I think I said six men and women. I don't know if I agree on all of them, but most of them I think is, are 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 at a different level. Yeah. In my pres- which my is respect. which is not to say he's bad. But you, which not is, great <laughs> sounds like not good. No, and we're in a dope and wet culture. Yeah. And, and, it's and not just, great. Just, just a person like. who loves to debate about culture, I yeah. like us to have a little more nuance, nuance, I right? See. So that we're not saying you had, you you actually pointed something really interesting the other yeah. day, and I clipped this that that Bigfoot Minaj's record put, came out number one because the whole world was. She pointed to that. You know, the whole world was waiting to see what you were going to say. Okay, yeah, and then she she pushed his. Megan's song back up to number one because of the like <laughs> vitriol, the, like the what happened after the song came out and everything, the response and the reaction to her, to Bigfoot, everybody went and started listening to his, and his became the number one song in the country. You agree that Meg won that battle? I agree that Meg. It's the number one song in the country, but I don't think honestly, I don't, th- I don't see it as a, a a battle yet until Meg actually makes a battle track again. you don't have to mention her we, we know i mean hip-hop is filled with battles where no, i didn't but those say your are, those name are subliminals I, you it's not a battle until two people have a round really yeah it's not Jay a battle Nas to, only had one round each i mean no, unless you want yeah, to talk two super people ugly had, no but the, they, they had a round though it was an actual round but that's what but that's what Megan wasn't Nikki around had. it was I don't think hiss is around. Uh, well, in in the Minaj Petty household, I think it's a <laughs> they subliminal. They were clear. <laughs> yeah, I think it's more of a subliminal than around. The Megan's Law line, I actually liked. I like that. It's that, a dope line. That's a that's a nice line. People were trying to trash it. Um, the dope, I'm, it, I'm not gonna say because it's like it's like she's talking about other people too. Uh, this that's normal. I mean, it's in fine. Takeover, it's Jay fine. was talking about Mob Deep. Yeah, and but he Nas. at least gave him a verse. Like, yeah, for sure. And and you knew what that was about. You knew the Takeover. It's like, look, let me get you out of the way now. You see, whereas who won the Jay Nas battle? Nas did. Why would you say such a thing? Because I'm not 
delusional? Like, so, so, <laughs> what are you talking so about? I just did this. In the takeover, Jay-Z is very clear with truthful things, right? Uh, there you go. We're talking about truthful like that matters. It does matter. It does. If I say your mom is so fat and you're like, dude, everyone knows my mom is skinny. Like she That's if everyone knows it. But if I say, I say, I say, I say, that's why no one want to talk to you because your breath stink. And now every girl doesn't want to talk to your breath stink and your breath don't stink. When I just Jay, made something up that ruined your life. When Jay-Z <laughs> says your bodyguard's verse is better than yours, right? Your career hard. ain't, right? Your career ain't that great, right? Hard. It's right? weird going back to this, but yeah, hard. R right, right. <laughs> Everything that Jay-Z says on the record, he believes to be true. Yeah. Nas says, you're gay. You're ugly. You're gay. You're ugly. Right? <laughs> Rockefeller died of AIDS. So what? Russell Simmons is your label head. He's from Queens. So what? You're gay. They're not. You're ugly. Why do you keep talking? Right? There's at least five times he says you're ugly and you're gay. When somebody completely destroys somebody we in a know. battle, what do we say they did? <laughs> I know. They ethered. Them. I know, but but let's so look let's at the not records. talk about. We can't even play ether now. But in the modern era, why are ether we cannot be played. Something from a different era and using today's eyes to look at it. Well, you know, in that way. I, no, I hear you. I'm just saying. You said who won I'm the battle ether. in that time? No, we just, know who won the battle. No, no, no. It was it was very controversial, right? It was not. It was not like when everybody someone does. says they won a battle. What did they do? A kid who doesn't even know about. Not, doesn't even know Jay-Z's music, understands the concept of being ethered. At the time when they played ether, right? Yeah. They ran a poll, right? I think it was Angie Martinez because she was the big radio person on Hot 97 at the time, right? Yeah. The poll was 51-49 for Nas. In so, New York. It In New York. Yes. yes. So New it, York's the only thing that matters? No, but I'm saying <laughs> that like that the culture was not like, like everybody thinks Meg won that battle. Right, like no, everybody yeah, things thinks are things right, are different Ice Cube right now, clearly yeah. won that battle. Because right? we have, this is more controversial. We have, and a, I'm like, when we yeah. go back and look at what did they say? Mm -hmm. Jay Z said multiple true things that mm -hmm. are hurtful and embarrassing to Nas. What did Nas say that was hurtful, hurtful and, embarrass and embarrassing? Wait, wait, what to did he Jay? say that was hurtful and embarrassing? Your your song, well, your you song. You got one hot album. One hot album every ten years. So he's freaking incepting us that his career isn't that hot. It was hotter than Jay Z was making it, right? Yeah, yeah. You lost Uchi Wally, right? Yeah. You're not street, which is true. Okay. You witnessed it from your folks' path. For Jay Z, who used to be a distributor, a multi state distributor, to say, <laughs> multi state distributor. Right, right, right. No, but I, you're, I, you witnessed multi -state it. Multi state right? distributor is so crazy. I love it. He used to be a multi state, right? not Jay single state, multi state right? distributor. Right. He's talking about I'm getting on the highway, nah. going to other states, right? Nas, Nas was, and I'm not saying this is good or bad, but yeah, yeah. if you listen to Illmatic, you would think, oh, Nas really knows about that life. He was around it, but he spent I, very I little time actually do being in the drug I game. I don't know anything about anybody's actual life, so I never speak on on those things, but I will speak on, and I can understand the perceptions, but I, but I will speak on uh, the fact that trying to embarrass, it's just like a real battle in real life. I'm trying to embarrass you, however. And in battle rap, they call that angles. It's like, how I'm going to try to attack you? What approach am I going to take to completely defame you and disgrace you? The angle that uh, Jay-Z took was the, I'm going to discredit you because you are all about credibility. So let me try to Music discredit good, you. You're you, not in the you know, street. All that right. discredits you. But it still comes from a place of, I'm trying to defame you. So is his music not good? No, like he said, he kind of incepted, like, sm smarten up, Nas, four, at, at four the, albums in 10 at, years. I could divide. At the time, Nas. It was, like, true. Yes. yes. It was yes. At the time, we felt like it was true. It's like, yes. yeah, I haven't heard about Nas in so long. Yes. But from that, if we look at it from this, today's eyes, like you're trying to do right now, now we got to look at who's still rapping. And well, who's Jay, I mean, Well, I mean, Jay-Z's coming out with an album this year. I mean, they, they have reconciled. So, like, the song no. doesn't move forward. But it, at the time... Jay Z so, was, but you're was looking right. at it from a forward perspective. No, no, no. At the time, yeah. right? It's like you, you. When no, but you're Jay, saying Jay says you lost to your bodyguard on Uchiwali. Nas says you lost to Eminem on Renegade. Now that's debatable, but like losing to Eminem, like Eminem's a great MC. 
You lost to your bodyguard. Those not everybody agrees with that, though. We, I, we, people agree with it, but not everybody in the out, outside world agree with that. Whereas, like, Nas was like, you are more famous and supposedly more cool than I am. I'm going back to the angle conversation. His angle was, I'm going to take all that away. You have whiskers. You look like— You're ugly. Yeah, and, and all that worked. It's the same way— How are you way- talking about a man ugly worked? It did though. But it, you I'm know what say, it did. You, but you know what it did. You know what happened. Partly yeah. what happened that Nas came out of nowhere, right? Yeah, Nas, yeah. his career was kind of over. We thought he was over. Mm-hmm. Jay Z was the biggest shit in the game. Yeah, yeah. So Nas had this David against Goliath thing of just anybody standing up to Jay Z. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah, like yeah. wow. Wow, like he's standing up on his own two feet and throwing a rock at Jay Z. So he comes with all that underdog shit. Nas took three months to write that record. You know, I, that's I the didn't best realize, you could do with three months. I'm not, like I said, I can't judge that record from today's eyes because I, same thing, like I don't judge the Pusha T situation with Drake with today's eyes because a lot of that is a, a little off. To me, when I think about it from now, and if I think about it as a grown man, it's like I'm I'm not saying these things. They're not thinking about it in that way. So I don't like to think about it too hard. But I'm just thinking about in that sense and in that time, throughout the 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 culture of of in in the world, it was kind of like ether. <laughs> it was kind of like I mean, ethered. I know the word. Ca- I know it the was word- kind of like ethered. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, shit, man. I know that that beat is not even good. The ether is, beat. The be- 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 I know. The beat's not even good. I know. Takeover is an amazing beat. And you know what? Super Ugly also goes hard. And I'm sure. I don't remember Super Ugly that. I I'm just remember sh- being. I'm almost- sure when Nas heard Super Ugly, because he, because Jay Z winks at it on Takeover. Yeah, yeah, at the end of it. Right, yeah. and Nas might have said, "You know what? I don't, I don't really want everybody knowing that. I know what he's doing. I'm good." But he couldn't. Right. Mm. And Super Ugly, he made sure everybody knows. Yeah, to me, that's less, that's more of the territory that you're talking about if I look at it in this this size. And I think Jay-Z retracted that or something, too. too. It's like super ugly, but that wasn't needed. I don't feel like that was the vibe. Even at that time, I was like, ah, why, why, where, why are we going there right now? Like, is that we, a, we, So we're we criticizing there? super ugly, but because of the ether, sh- which is all your gay, your gay, your gay. I have that's to re-look weird. at and the you're lyrics. ugly. I had to re-look at the lyrics. I mean, how is a man saying to another man, you're ugly and all different? You look like Joe Camel. You have whiskers. Blah, blah, blah. They like, jokes. Like, if you go to uh, somebody, they're like, this, it's like, get your ugly ass out of here. Something like that. It's a joke. And like, one time. And all, the girls, and all the girls laugh at you. But girls, right. One time, you're ugly. One time. But, like, over <laughs> and over and over, like, Nas is Maxwell. Look at the lyrics. Like, what? I have to go back and look at I the lyrics. I don't know. I, have, I When I really dug into it, I'm like, you repeatedly say you're gay mm-hmm. and you repeatedly say you're ugly. And I'm like, you didn't realize how those two things mesh together in a very uncomfortable way. Like you're mm-hmm. overly fixated with this man's looks, yet you're trying to allege that he's gay. <laughs> you really covered that. <laughs> nah, 40, 25 years later, you just, you're like, no, I mean, Nas. I feel like, I feel like <laughs> the, the culture remembers it as Nas one. I, I I accept that. Yeah. And I, I think the culture is wrong. That's all I'm trying. All I'm trying to say is like, we've moved past that. And if you go look at it with t- today's lens, I can see where you're coming. I'm from. not looking at it through a today lens. It is a I'm, today's no, lens. No, I'm not. I'm looking at two pieces of paper, right? Uh-huh. Here's what Jay-Z wrote. Here's what Nas wrote. And Jay-Z does it in 16. Nas takes three verses and barely lands a punch. I just would disagree with that. What is the Because I was la- I'm is saying the- as a as a 14, 15 year old kid, I was dying. And I'm a Jay-Z, I'm a supreme Jay-Z fan at that time. I'm like, this album, this blueprint changed my life. And I'm like, Oh my God, wow. KRS already did a song called Blueprint. Yeah, he did. He made a record called uh Ghetto Music, the Blueprint of Hip Hop. So what? All Nas's disses on is, either are is, so what? But that's the same, you could put the same weight in that and saying, oh, I did four albums in 10 years. No, that's so your what? career. No, 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 no. One album is good enough. To, if I made Illmatic, chill out. He could <laughs> no, say that too. I mean, no, if I made Illmatic, chill out. I'll be back five years from now. 
Like, no, what are you, you talking made, about? I made you, Illmatic. You made, you, if I made Thriller and someone told me, yo, man, you don't be dropping <laughs> albums. It's like, I made Thriller, bro. What <laughs> are you talking lot, about? That's, lot, that, that's, not, that's not how Mike looked at it. He wanted to top Thriller. Oh, of course, that's you not go, how he looked at it. You made four albums. You made one good one. That's what you are? Okay. That's a diss. But that's not true. He did out of those four albums. It wasn't just one good one. Yeah, it was. It, it was, was at least also two. It was written. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was like, at least two. It was like two. But does <laughs> so. So that's what I'm saying. There's some untruth to that, which is the same thing with the KRS Blueprint line. Which is like he's I, stretching I think that was it a hot line. He's stretching it a little bit, and Jay Z is stretching it a little bit there. But he's not. But Nas's whole shit is based on lies. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think that doesn't matter when it comes to battles. Person, but it doesn't hit if you lie. It's a. Does it hit now? Does when Nikki says you had no scar, you got shot and no scars. Yeah. Meg showed us photos of the scars. Okay. So that is clearly a baseless line. So like. Yeah, that's a straight up line lie. But if you if you're hitting with different jokes that cut, that will cut out at you. That's that's like that's battle rapping. There's there's some truths and some untruths. Like I look like like when I look at no Vaseline. Yeah. Okay. He's the whole thesis of No Vaseline is you're getting screwed by Jerry Heller. That's what he keeps coming. Yeah. Back that's to. just that's just ridiculously and, excellent though. Yes. And yes. And we understood. Shout out, Q. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. And we and I don't we didn't we don't have access to the books, but we know he used to be in that group. Yeah. So he surely knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's dev like you NWA is getting screwed out of their money by a white man. No Vaseline. That right. That's <laughs> it. Right. And it's truthful. Yeah, there's, there's a, and you get the perspective, but it's like, and that's where battle rappers try to go to, to nowadays. It's like they want to do research on the person. They asking their baby mama, they asking their friend to get all this information. It's like, oh yeah, I used to work at FedEx. I used to be over there where Kim used to, like they over there telling your whole life. And, and I get that, but sometimes that gets too personal and it doesn't, it doesn't achieve the goal of truly, uh, defaming and, and executing this person. It feels like you're just saying these things, but what are you going to do with that information? Yeah. Like, what does that actually mean when it comes to this, this rap craft? You know, sometimes it gets a little too much about like, I can do this because I know Karen and Karen uh, is going to do this to, for me, for you. It's like, <laughs> what does that do? Does it bother you moving on that, yeah. um, the word free, can I, I think you're a purist. I think you're a hip hop purist. Man, uh, uh, that the word freestyle has become bastardized into meaningless. It just means a song you haven't heard before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I'm it okay used to be it. an actual improvise improvisation. As a 17-year-old listening to raucous records, <laughs> I would have a problem with that. Twenties <laughs> uh, and thirties, I was. I don't care. It's like it, it makes sense. Just just like I don't have a problem. Like people. I, on my post, someone said, this is why I don't listen to mumble rap because this guy is saying, talking about real rap. And I'm like, you're just talking about mumble rap in 2024? Like, yeah. I don't even think that exists anymore. Like, yeah. What are you talking about? So I, I'm I'm okay with things growing and changing because that's the one of the cornerstones of hip hop to me. What do you is changing. What do you aspire to do or have for your career? Like, what, in what, this immediate, the, what the, more do you want? The media, the media goal is to be to put out more music because I never really I put out my first song in 2021 uh, individually like solo wise and I've never really tried to really put out rap music a lot really just put it out there for people to enjoy like here's a body of work an actual album here's a bunch of songs just needs to be out there that's all I want to do right in this moment and then other things are more personal goals and you know, you got financial goals and different artistic goals when it comes to like, uh, like maybe act actually doing working in TV and film on a creative side. That's definitely uh, the goal. But um, like visually creative, not just the music or composing something. You know, working on on that. But with rap right now, I just want to put out music, not even rap. Just just want to put out music. Best of luck to you. Yeah. Could talk about rap with you all day. All day. So much fun. fun. Thank guy. you so much. All right. Thank you for having me.